In this video, we're going to finish the proof that the dimension of the row space of a matrix is equal to the dimension of its column space. We've already done the first step. That was to show that the result is true in the special case of a matrix in reduced row echelon form. In this step, we're going to show that the dimension of the column space of A and the dimension of the column space of the reduced row echelon form of A are the same. We're going to do this as follows. Call R the reduced row echelon form of A. Now, as R is the reduced row echelon form of A, that means that we can obtain R by doing elementary row operations on A. Therefore, if we let these elementary row operations be represented by elementary matrices E1 through EK, then the product of E1 through EK times A is going to be equal to R. Define E to be the product of the E1 through EK. The most important thing for us is that E is an invertible matrix. This is because all of the E1 through EK are invertible, they're elementary matrices. Therefore, the product of invertible matrices is also invertible, so E is invertible. So if we just turn this equation around, that tells us that A is equal to E inverse times R. Now we've already seen how to find a basis for a matrix in reduced row echelon form. So say that R has little r many pivots. That means that it has little r many non-zero rows. We've seen that a basis for the column space of R is going to be given by the pivot columns, those columns containing a leading entry. And since r has little r many pivots, there are going to be little r many such pivot columns. Call them v1 through vr. So this v1 through vr is a basis for the column space of, of r. What we're going to show now is that E inverse times v1 up to E inverse times VR are a basis for the column space of A. Now if we can do that, then we'll be done, because then we will have found a basis for the column space of A with R many vectors, therefore the dimension of the column space of A is equal to R, which is the same as the dimension of the column space of R. So now it just suffices to prove this claim. One interesting thing to note is actually this claim is telling us more information. It's actually telling us that we can find a basis for the column space of A among columns of A. Each of these vectors, E inverse V1 through E inverse VR, are actually columns of A. Now why is that? That's because V1 through VR are columns of capital R. And now, by our definition of matrix matrix product, the kth column of A is going to be E inverse times the kth column of R. Therefore, since each of these vectors is a column of R, when I multiply by E inverse, I'm going to get a column of A. So not only are we finding a basis for the column space of A, we're actually finding this basis from among the columns of A itself. Now let us prove this claim. Since we want to show that something is a basis, we need to show two things. We need to show that these vectors span the column space of A, and we need to show that they're linearly independent. Let's start out with the spanning condition. Call AI the ith column of A and ri the ith column of r. Now we know that v1 through vr are bases for the columns of r. Therefore, v1 through vr span the columns of r. That means that any column of r, say column ri, can be written as a linear combination of the vectors v1 through vr. Now as we just said, the ith column of a is exactly E inverse times the ith column of R. 
Therefore, if we just multiply both sides of this equation by E inverse, we obtain that the ith column of A is a linear combination of E inverse times V1 up to E inverse times VR. Now this is exactly what we wanted to show because we've shown that an arbitrary column of A can be written as a linear combination of these vectors E1, E inverse V1 up to E inverse VR. Now to finish the claim that E inverse V1 up to E inverse VR are basis for the column space of A, we need to show that they're linearly independent. So to show that a set of vectors is linearly independent, we set up the equation that a linear combination of those vectors is equal to the all zero vector, and we need to show that that implies that all of the coefficients in this linear combination are equal to zero. Okay, so let's set up this equation, and now we want to show that all of the a1 up to ar are equal to zero. What we can do is just multiply both sides of this equation by e. So when we do that on the right hand side, we're going to have e times the all zero vector, and that just remains the all zero vector. And on the left hand side, you see that now we're going to get all these pairs of E times E inverse, which of course is just the identity matrix. So all of these guys are just going to be the identity matrix. So if we simplify that, that just tells us that A1 times V1 plus dot 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 plus AR times VR is equal to the all zero vector. But now we know that V1 through VR are linearly independent because they are a basis for the column space of capital R. Therefore, if a linear combination of V1 through VR is equal to the all zero vector, that implies that all of the coefficients here must be zero. So that means that A1 through AR must all be zero, and thus we have proven what we wanted to. So that completes the proof that E inverse V1 up to E inverse VR are a basis for the column space of A. We've shown that they span the column space, and we've shown that they're linearly independent. So this means that the dimension of the column space of A is equal to little r, which again is the same as the dimension of the column space of capital R. Now we finish the second step, and now we finish the proof that row rank is equal to column rank.